so probably it's good to do a recap of kind of what's changed in the intervening week because I have put in a few hours. Wow, I can see up there on the uh, the the top uh, left, right. Yeah, the top left of the screen. Um, that uh, we are now on year four, day eighteen uh, of uh, playing. Uh, so I think this is all mostly the same. Oh yeah, I remember. So one of the questions, there was a quest reward for some magic drawers. And I'm pretty sure these are just normal drawers, but they're made of a, like a magical wood. But they don't have any special behavior. They're just drawers like all the other drawers. Um, I moved the furnace in here and got some hoppers and stuff. Uh, that, that's a thing. So we have lots of stone. I saw some interesting um, variations we can make with the chisel from from stone as opposed to cobblestone. And uh, we need it for other things. Uh, and I wasn't using the furnace really for anything else. I got a proper like fuel goes in the back, uh, chests and all that automation. Uh, where's my chisel? There it is. So yeah, so we have kind of the normal vanilla stone bricks and some variations, some interesting ones here. Modern Mafix mas uh, masonry, modern Felsic masonry. So some interesting, like not just the same gray, but some interesting texture and then some different colorations that are also mobs cannot spawn on. So we might use those later. Oh, it holds the blocks, huh? Interesting, interesting. Uh, cool. All right. Uh, so that's a thing. I, I put this here. So this is some stuff that we got from a loot bag, I think. Uh, many weeks ago that was over in the other place. And I put a chest here with the stuff in it because we should probably use this at some point. It's a reusable battery that has 50,000 EU in it. A solar panel that I, I went into uh, my test world, my creative world to figure out how that, that worked. And a battery buffer. So you can basically put the, the battery in the battery buffer. The battery buffer doesn't hold power, but it can hold a battery that holds power. And you can just put the solar panel on top and then you have a uh, like a source of power that you can just drop anywhere uh, for uses. Um, I think when we left last time, I just had the single pipe coming down. This room was not quite so large. And we had the, uh, the forge hammer for making um, uh, plates out of ingots to make more pipes. So since the last stream, I made a bunch of pipes and basically took all the machinery that we already had all of the, uh, the steam extractor and uh, all the stuff that used to be upstairs. And I set this all up. I set up the uh, macerators so that they chain, so we can like put in uh, stuff into the chest and I'll macerate and then macerate and then go into the chest. Um, so yeah, more hoppers. <laughs> also been working on making more rubber bars that we'll need for later. Um, I think that's the main thing that I mean, I was doing other stuff, uh, prepping materials and stuff, but that, that was the main thing. Uh, today, I, I'm hoping we can make some progress in exploring, um, yeah, there's our fully filled steam tank and our boiler. Oh, it's night, sleep. So I'm hoping today though, to kind of, um, make our first low voltage machines. Um, last stream we made the, like the low voltage steam turbine, I think it was, which will let us take the steam that we're producing and make power. Um, right, so last time I remember this, there, it was unclear to me how we were gonna get the, uh, the creosote out. And uh, I actually saw, I think I saw on someone's stream uh, that uh, a solution for that. And 
it was a solution that was obvious in retrospect, like a lot of things are. Ignore the redstone for a minute. Uh, so it's a seared faucet. A seared faucet into a pipe. Uh, now you notice right now it's not pouring. It's because we are, we're full of creosote and the, uh, the coke ovens are probably also fully full as well. Just about. We're taking a little bit. So this, this chunk is loaded, right? So this is running continuously, like all throughout the week. Um, I have been going and getting more wood. Um, I don't know if I've actually looked to my left <laughs> yet. Uh, there might be some trees over there we'll see in a second. So that, this, is a, this is a big thing that I've been working on though, is figuring out, okay, make some more, uh, actually we had fluid pipes, so I just got some pipes. And then a very old school solution for having a like a clock signal going to the faucets. It's uh, it's it's no repeaters, just redstone torch, uh, five knot gates <laughs> in a in a circle. I mean, it could be any odd number, right? Uh, but it you know propagates a signal around. We can tie off that and flip this on and off, and then uh, just the signal continues over here. And uh, yeah, also turns on these two. So yeah, very very old school vanilla Minecraft way of doing this. There are like things that we could make. There's like a block that's a redstone clock and stuff, but it would require more effort, more materials than this did. So this works for now. Uh, as we do more, it'll probably be a lot easier just to make. Uh, do I even have it bookmarked anymore? I think I unbookmarked it because we didn't need it. Uh, okay, so I think that pretty much catches us catches us up on what's going on. I did also make there was a task that we looked at like more than a month ago to make these uh, uh, these tanks. Uh, so these were, were like, oh yeah, they were like the obsidian dust to make obsidian glass and some things. So I made a couple of, well, I made one of them and we got another one as a quest for reward as kind of a, um, a place to store some extra creosote. Um, but you can see here we're, we're full of steam, full of creosote, full of water. Uh, we're just waiting for steam to be used for this to, to do its thing and send steam down, down the pipe. Uh, and then I used some of the tin pipes that we had to, uh, which can't, uh, in and of themselves take block, uh, like take, uh, charcoal or whatever from the inventory from the Coke ovens. So I just have a hopper, hopper into the pipe and the pipe goes into the drawer. So we have like a thousand charcoal just sitting here, uh, which is good. So one of the things I've been doing is it is more efficient for the um, the blast furnace that we're using to make steel. Uh, you can fit more in if you use charcoal blocks instead of just charcoal. So uh, we probably need iron too for this. So let me grab two stacks of iron. We're back up to almost a thousand. Oh, never mind. About eight hundred uh, iron ingots. And uh, so I've been doing a lot of processing of materials. I, I mined out another vein as well. So if you look at the map here, uh, I think last time I had mined out this vein here, this iron vein. And so then uh, the other day I mined out this copper vein, which also had a lot of iron in it. Uh, yeah, so been been busy. Ah, uh, yeah. So we got 60 more steel ingots. And uh, what's the problem here? Is this not running? Looks like it's running. Oh yeah, it's very slow, right? Because what's happening here is that this recipe, uh, so like if we if we do with like uh, Coke, coal, or 
uh, cold cocoa or these other things to make steel. It does one ingot at a time. But if we provide a block, I think it's one of the last. Yeah, so it does like 10 at a time. So it's 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 not any faster though. It's there we go. So it's 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 doing. Um, it means that we can like put a a bunch of material in here. We do have to take the materials out. I I've read that it's not really at all possible to automate this at all, which I think includes like putting a hopper under. I've not tried, but uh, yeah, it's fine. We're just good. I've been uh, checking every once in a while to pull stuff out so it can keep going. And we're up to, um, I don't know, some amount of steel. Let's see, let's see. Let's put that iron back. Oop. We're up to uh, 360 steel. Hey, Foxy, how's it going? Oh, put those ashes away. There we go. I don't know. We'll probably use them for something. It's something that feels like the situation in this pack is that everything is eventually useful. So the other thing I wanted to do before we look at new stuff is that we have these basic Stone Age loot bags. You missed you missed me yesterday. Yeah, yeah. We didn't have our um, uh, the Baldur's Gate thing. Have we actually done that bef after the the first one we did? Was that just the one session? Um, yeah, I was thinking about that, but I figured it seemed like you were maybe busy with things. Um, so yeah, I, I think I said before, not yet, I've been moving. Yep, that's right, that's right. Um, that I, it would be cool to enchant these with fortune for them to get better results. But looking into that, that's gonna be quite a while. Uh, and at that point, maybe we don't care so much about Stone Age loot bags. You can, like, turn them in, I think. Is it over here? So basic to Steam Age. So three. So we could submit three Stone Age ones and get one Steam Age. That might be good. So the downside of doing this is there are, like, if we look at this... And we look at this loot bag here. Um, there are food items here that could be uh, helpful for us, you know, trying different foods. But there's a lot of stuff that is. Hmm, I mean, woods copper chest upgrade, eight chests. It's not bad, right? But then the steam age loot, loot bag. Then here's the possible reward. So then we have like spawn eggs other kinds of foods fire bricks that would be useful i think i think i might want to just go with uh converting there we go okay and that's a repeatable quest right so i can if i had more basic stone age ones i could still convert them um and i think there are other yeah steam to lv so like what what do you get from lv loot bags is a question so some very useful things like glass tubes, uh, a dolly, uh, actual machinery and seeds. Like stickweed seeds would be amazing. Four stickweed seeds would be really, really good if we could get something like that. So uh, let's let's do some loot bag turn-ins and uh, see what we get. So I'm gonna go check my other loot bags that I have up here. Uh, the min max, the min maxi thing to do, right, would be to uh, save them all until we have fortune, and uh, uh, then, you know, open them then. But I don't really want to wait that long. Uh, we're we're gonna up, open the IC two crop ones too. So let's let's do a thing. So we're gonna there we go claim back there we go I, I think I have to uh, let's see there we go it takes a minute um, did I have the lumber axe last time or was that something that I made between streams I forget 
I think I think last time I said I went through and made a bunch of tools. <laughs> um, and that might have been part of that. There we go. So it's here one LV loop bag. Uh, we're gonna keep on turning in. I think it'll be better to have the LV loop bag. We could get something really cool that would be applicable right now for like um, low voltage. There's three. And we'll have um, we'll have at least one left over. So we'll 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 get to try a uh, another Stone Age and Steam Age, and then the rest will be low voltage that we can we can open. Mm -hmm. And then I'm uh, we'll see what we get from IC two crops, right? So IC two crops, we could get crop sticks. That'd be really good. Although. What I'm really excited about in low voltage is we'll be able to make the assembler. And I think having the assembler will make it much less expensive to make the, the crops, the IC2 uh, crop sticks, uh, which is why I've not been making uh, a huge amount of farmland yet. And why I kind of stopped working on the, uh, the, the seed, the plant breeding, because it takes just a lot of crop sticks because you use them, like it uses them up to um, uh, to do that process. One more, and then we'll have all the loot bags. All right. So uh, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back downstairs to the storage area, and uh, that way we'll we'll be in a position to uh, put things away. I mean, we shouldn't get like a bunch of stuff. I don't know. I guess. So the thing is, and it's it's not really obvious when looking at this. You might assume that like, oh, you're gonna get one of the things here, but I don't think that's how that works, right? So if you look over this, there's a percentage chance. Um, and if it's unenchanted, it's the one, it's the number over there that's underlined 1.35%. But I think it, uh, I think it rolls them all. So you can get multiple things from here potentially. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with IC2 crops and see what we get. You can deal with that many stairs. So it's good. So good for the legs though, right? <laughs> that's one thing that's not. So this, this doesn't, um, I've seen actually, um, it's more of like, um, back in the day you would play like on a server and there would be like RPG elements as a Minecraft mod. This doesn't have any of that. The closest thing is like the, the leveling up hearts by eating different foods and stuff. Uh, but that would be funny. All right. So I see two crops loot bag. We got some hydration cells. Uh, I think these will be useful later. Like, I think they um, are used. Yeah, I turned this one in, didn't I? Or I'm not, it's not reachable yet. They don't get any hydration unless you apply water manually. Make a hydration cell and use it in your crops to increase their growth speed. So this is like a thing we could do. Um, okay, well that, I was hoping for something that would be I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a loot bag. You never know what you're going to get. All right. We got spawn chicken and spawn cow. Okay. Uh, I might, I might just make a chest. Do I have spare chests in here? No, I could almost make a chest. I don't have any flint over there. So random chest in the, on the floor. There we go. All right. So now, so that was the IC2 loot bag and the um, Stone Age loot bag. And so here we have a, a uh, oh no, that was the, the Steam Age one. Okay. Did them out of water. Oh, well. So here's the uh, Stone Age one. We got some leather boots. 
All right. Uh, oh, this stuff is from. There we go. Okay. So we got some leather boots. So that was from the uh, this first three loot bags. Now we have eight tier one uh, loot bags. So maybe we'll get some good stuff here. So, ooh, we got a Supreme Pizza. Two Supreme Pizzas. Seven electric motors is actually really good. Uh, I mean, they're not all that expensive to make, especially really soon. Um, one of the, uh, so, pause one thread. Let's talk about a different thread. Um, one of the things, I think I did this on the last screen, but one of the things I'm gonna try to start doing is using the tabs to keep separate sets of bookmarked items. So like I have bookmarked food items here, and then I have stuff for like our progression, like low voltage stuff here, uh, and stuff I wanted to look at. And then, you know, useful items, uh, just basic items, essentially. 800 tabs later, yeah, pretty much. Uh, I don't know that there's a limit. <laughs> and of course, I'm not even, look, there's 23 things in here. You know how many things you can fit on here? Like, several hundred, probably. But yeah, I'm all about the tabs. Anyway, so the electric motor motors, we're going to make a lot of these things. And they require wire. And so one of the first thing, one of the first low voltage machines we're going to make is the uh, basic wire mill because it's going to, it's going to make it twice as efficient to make wire from copper ingots or any other kind of ingots. So right now it's like one to one, one ingot makes one wire with this one ingot should make two wires. Uh, so yeah, with some power. So that's the thing. Uh, let's, uh, let's do this. Let's, um, let's just keep opening, opening loot bags. All right. So we have eight glass tubes. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. I actually, I, I made some glass tubes already 37. So we have some additional ones and a tank, like the two tanks we have up there. I can add a third because they do just stack. They don't have to be piped together or anything. Uh, so there's that. Uh, so that's two of eight. All right, uh, we got, I think that went into one of my bags. It did. Oh, we got eight aluminum gravel ore. That That's good. Also for right now, I'm just gonna lock these bags. There we go. More aluminum is good. We don't have a way of uh, getting aluminum yet other than getting gravel or fr from the, um, the berries. So that's good. Ooh, we got another dolly. So these allow us to like just pick up a chest. But what's really nice is if you have two dollies, like now we have two dollies, we can, um, and we can sneak right click to fold them. And when you do that, then they stack. So now we have two dollies. We can pick up two chests and take them somewhere uh, without spilling their contents. So that's handy because they're not, I mean, they're not that expensive to make. Oh, I can't um, look at the recipe when they're folded like that. They're, they're not too expensive to make, but not super cheap either. All right, what else? What else are we gonna get? We're halfway done. We got four mushroom stew. We've not eaten that, so that's good. Uh, we got saplings. Uh, I think we've gotten this reward before. So you can see you can get more than one item from the loot bag. In this case, it was like a set of saplings. All right, dark oak and acacia and fusewood sapling. Uh, let's see, dark oak and acacia. I think I had some fusewood saplings and yeah, right there, all right. All right, two to go. Eight apples. Okay, and? <laughs> uh, standard minecart hull from Steve Carts 2. So, that that is a whole thing to make otherwise. You could have like iron wheels and iron plates and the iron wheels are you know, rings and rods and tools and stuff. So it's not like it's a um, uh, a trivial thing to make one of those. All right, so we got 
some pretty cool stuff. I think I'll just keep the dollies on me. Uh, we'll take the tank and put it upstairs. We're going to put these items away into the uh, uh, work table where we're doing our electrical work, our low voltage stuff. The steam turbine we're going to be using very shortly. The apples, uh, I think I'm putting it right there. And um, aluminum ore, I think, goes over here. Yep. And then I want one of these mushroom stews and one of these pizzas. Oh, nighttime. Okay. So, one more thing. And then it'll be time to look at some uh, um, machinery. Yes. One more thing. Uh, so, there we go. Yeah. So that one still has not grown. But these three are um, something I discovered as I was trying to uh, figure out how to more efficiently get logs to uh, to use for making charcoal and for creosote to fuel things, right? And um, I looked at the wiki, and there's a table, uh, and one of them was uh, redwood saplings. So the the tree over there was a redwood, but from a different mod. There's also from biomes of plenty of redwood that is uh, supposed to be like five by five. This is supposed to grow it. But this seems like it's not going to do anything for us. I mean, it's not gonna be efficient, in other words, because it takes so long to grow. But I did discover that there was a, um, a sapling that you can craft with a certain kind of sapling and some sticks and uh, something else that I had laying around. Oh yeah, a piece of bone meal. I had to macerate a bone. Uh, and, and so, what's really nice about this is with my lumber axe. Ding. We did it. <laughs> uh, let's unlock the uh, Forster's backpack. There we go. Get that pizza back on the bar, throw that out. All right. So that made us a little hungry. Good thing we have this pizza here. There we go. More hearts. Uh, you see we also have some different effects. Toughness 2, Strength and Resistance. I think that's coming from Improved Nutrition. Which is a completely separate thing from the hearts thing, from eating different foods. If we balance our nutrition, uh, or you know, if we get high numbers and stay you know, away from low numbers, I think is how that works. We get uh, bonus things here as well, something like that. All right, so one tree, what's really cool is the tree grows really fast and it only takes one sapling to, uh, to actually plant to f make the tree. So it's really easy to just like, pop, there we go, all right. Let's finish picking everything up. And from that tree, we, uh, we're we gonna have to repair our ax before we, tr we try the next one. But if I look in the lumber, the forester's backpack, there we go, it's, you know, one, two, three, four, five, almost six stacks of logs from that one tree. Um, so yeah, so we're just gonna repair this. And uh, let's see, go there. So like, I'll uh, I'll trap this tree down, and it's gonna fill the uh, the backpack, and then we'll have to have the rest of our inventory. There we go. <laughs> Very satisfying. So, oh, I guess uh, not quite full. 
There we go. Uh, and I, I do, something I did learn is you definitely don't want to use a, you want to make sure your ax is 100% before you try cutting out a tree. Because of course, if it, if it runs out of durability, when um, uh, partway through, then it will leave the top and then you have to climb up there to uh, deal with it. And that's, that's no fun. Uh, wrong way around. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. There we go. Now we've exceeded our uh, backpack's capacity. Also, it drops apples. Uh, so the sapling here is it's a rainforest oak sapling from GT++. So yeah, it's any kind of sapling with sticks and bone meal. So really simple, you know, accessible recipe and means that we can just like, we can get lots of, lots of logs really fast. Which uh, is good. Until we can we can actually properly automate wood production. Now I, I'm I'm wondering if this is ever going to grow. Uh, should be interesting. It's again different than the kind of uh, redwood tree we grew here. The reason I'm not doing more of these is because it's relative to the other ones it's not that much more wood and then it's a mixture of like the bark and the redwood itself and it's um just the like the the way the recipes work is uh is is not the same and it's kind of awkward and annoying uh so yeah all right so let's see so this is this is the main thing though is the to, to keep the um to fill up the drawers right uh at some point we're going to start using more creosote oil and this will actually be helpful to have all this backlog uh probably really soon as we start uh setting up steam turbines that are using more and more steam uh we will need more fuel for our industry all right let's get the other stuff out of there. there go. Put stuff away. And um, I think it's time to uh, finally look at doing some low voltage machinery. Once I put things away. Oh, this is full. Uh, right. Let's take this, this here, there we go, and the rest of that is good, just need to put away the apples. Now there's still more drawer space, and I'm going to add more drawers because we have a lot more items. We still have a bunch of things over at the, uh, the original house, and things that we're, you know, haven't decided how we're going to store it yet uh, as well. So it's, it's, yeah. Okay, so um, the things I want to make are, so we've already made the steam turbine. We have one of those. Um, we're gonna make the wire mill. So let's see, things about the wire mill. So we hit U on the wire mill so we can look at its recipes. What we're really interested in right now is making um, things like fine wire and wire. Now they use four EU per tick. Um, and then, let's see if you look at 10 wire. So that carries 32 volts at one amp. Let's see, oh, there we go, 10 cable. Yeah, same thing. 
one amp, 32 volts. So like if we look at the steam turbine, the steam turbine outputs 32 volts, all the low voltage stuff is 32 volts. Um, and it says base rate, two liters of steam, one EU. So the generator will provide an amp of power at 32 volts. And then as long as the wire can handle an amp, then that part is fine. It doesn't matter about the machine. The worst case is the machine needs more than one amp or we have multiple machines and they each need an amp, so they need two amps. Um, that's not gonna work unless we have two generators. They won't be able to run simultaneously and the wire would need to then handle two amps. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is all right. I did some reading and watched some videos over the last week to make sure that I would hopefully know what I, I'm doing here because if we do this wrong, things just explode or they catch on fire or they catch on fire and then they explode. So, uh, and then what we're gonna, so we wanna make the wire mill that'll let us make wire. Uh, and then we want to make the bending machine. What the bending machine does is it is it lets us make a bunch of things, including um, buckets, uh, including plates from ingots. So before, so originally to make a, um, a plate like by hand, like, like with a hammer, you would need uh, two ingots would make one plate, two to one, right? And then with the steam um, uh, forge, uh, forge hammer, steam forge hammer, um, you can use three ingots to make two plates, right? So it's one and a half ingots per plate. So with the bending machine, we can make a plate from one ingot. So it's gonna be way more material efficient to do. Um, so yeah, that will be good. So we're gonna take that and then let's take a look at what we need to make the wire mill. So for the wire mill, we need an LV machine hull. Like all, all the machines are gonna need an LV machine hull. We're, we're gonna need a bunch of those. We need uh, two uh, electronic circuits low voltage electronic circuits and two tin cables. Now we have one tin cable and uh, we're gonna have to make another one. And we don't have any machinery really to do that. We need to make a tin wire and we don't have the wire mill yet. With the wire mill, we could take, you know, a tin ingot and make two wires. Here's a thought, tin rods. How do we make those? It's in the lathe, right? And we get some tin dust or with, um, a fluid solidifier. Once we get to the fluid solidifier, then um, the wires get even less expensive because then we should be able to like melt the tin, cast it into rods, and then, uh, no, I don't think that's actually, no, I don't think it's more efficient, right? Because it's one to one here. So we can make two tin rods with the fluid solidifier from the ingot. So yeah, I think that it comes up to, yeah, it's the same. Never mind. Um, with the extruder, no, that's not anymore. For it's still one to two. Okay, but for now we have to do this recipe. So we need a tin plate, and we need uh, like a cutter, a wire cutter. Yep. Well, we have tin plates already, and uh, I think we have a wire cutter in here still. It's almost, it's almost done, but not quite. There we go. One wire. And then, uh, let's see, what are our options for making the wire into a cable? So everything that's uninsulated is called a wire, as far as I know, and then you put like rubber insulation on it, and then it's a cable. And the benefit of a cable, like when you're running electrical wiring, is that it won't shock you in this game. Uh, so with the assembler and molten rubber, with the alloy smelter and two rubber bars or two rubber. Um, with the wire mill, we can do that. With the bending machine, we can make springs. Can we... 
Oh, I see. Rubber sheet. So if we wanted to make it by hand, not using machinery, we would need a whole rubber sheet. And a rubber sheet is... Uh, actually, that's... Why is that less expensive? That's three rubber bars and two, which means each rubber sheet represents one and a half rubber. So why is that less expensive than using the alloy smelter? Hmm. Huh. Anyway, um, I think we might still have rubber sheets. Or did we use them all already? Oh no, they're right, they're right here. There we go. Okay, so now we have two tin cables. We're gonna want more, but first we're gonna get the wire cutter down to make wire for us. And then we'll use that to make <laughs> cables so that we can have multiple sh machines connected to the same generator. Yes. Okay, so we get that. Uh, what else do we need? So we need uh, two circuits and a machine hole. So the machine hole is a machine casing. And so for that, we need steel plates. So this is why I've been focusing on making so much steel. Every single machine, LV machine, is gonna need at least eight steel plates. Uh, and that is more than eight ingots right now. But uh, let's see, what are, we, what are we looking at here? Um, I have three, so I just need five more. So if we need five, each two needs three. So we need uh, at least nine here until we make the bender. So once we make the, uh, the bending machine, then, uh, then this gets cheaper. But first we need to do the thing, to do the thing, to do the thing, ow. Um, what am I looking for? Oh yeah, ouch. The uh, forge hammer, there we go. And why I'm getting hurt is I keep on touching the, the, uh, <laughs> the steam pipe right here. It'd be nice if there was a way to just like slap some insulation onto that. I bet there is a, um, you think there's an insulated pipe in this? Probably not something we can make, even if there is. Uh, if there is, I, I don't know. Lots of things though. All right, I think that that's done. Okay, cool. All right, so then we make this, except we need wrought iron plate. Did we really? No. What am I, what was I looking at this? Oh yeah, for this, we need wrought iron, maybe. Let's make that though. Yeah, all the recipes need, need wrought iron. What's cool is once we have the assembler, then we just need tin cable and the casing and molten polyethylene. Sure, sure. Uh, but for now we need the one steel plate extra that we just made. And oh, we're gonna need more tin cables because this also needs tin cables. And then two wrought iron plates. Do we have wrought iron? We have two wrought iron plates that we can use, good. Let's go make some more tin, uh, that's the wrong kind of plate. More tin wires. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then, hmm. Again, I'm surprised that this is more expensive. Uh, doing it with the uh, alloy smelter. So if we put these two in here, no, no, it's three, isn't it? So 
So you can see like this machinery needs rubber. It's not just the rubber for the cables to like connect things together, which wouldn't be a lot uh, for a while, but for the machines themselves that we're gonna make, we're gonna need a lot of wire, uh, a lot of cable. So we are gonna need rubber for that. And that's why I have been preparing more rubber. Uh, let's see, so let's put this in here. Two more of those. Okay, so now we can make the machine hull. And then we wanna make the wire mill. So for the wire mill, we still need two electronic circuits. And we don't have those things yet. We need to make vacuum tubes. <laughs> and we need uh, resistors. So for both of those, we need copper wire and fine copper wire. So the, the copper wire, because we don't have a wire mill still, that's what we're making. We need copper foil, which we get by, uh, the bending machine could do that, but we don't have that yet. Um, we're gonna use copper plate and a hammer. We have some of those, let's see, let's see if this is, uh, oh, right, right, right. We're also gonna need to make wire so let's do this. We'll, we'll take, um, we'll leave these here. Let's make some plates. Hopefully that will be enough until we have the bending machine. Uh, well, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, too far. Uh, let's see, so things things that I've also bookmarked here to make a backpack. So for this, we need five tan leather. Um, so we need, what, five woven cotton plus, so eight woven cotton. Hmm. Eight times four. Uh, 32, 32 cotton, and a bunch of string. We don't have a bunch of string, but we can make a bunch of string. Very precise amount there, a bunch. More than 32, right? Uh, okay, so can we make, how much woven cotton can we make here? Eight. <laughs> All right, good. Okay, let's, it's just a side quest. So we're gonna need some wires to make electronic circuits, to make vacuum tubes. We also need red, red alloy cable, we'll get to that. Vacuum tubes, three, so we need six wires and four fine copper wires. Six and four, okay. So we're probably gonna use up our wire cutters here. So we didn't have enough plate. <laughs> uh, let's see, and then the hammer. Is it, is it wire cutters with a foil? I bet it is. Yep. All right, so wire cutters are a thing. We need three plates, two rods. One, two, we have no plates. All right, so we're gonna make more iron plates. After we sleep. So you can see already how much like I'm making plates, I'm making wires, all these things will be much, somewhat less expensive to make once we make these machines. Some real motivation to progress here. Uh, and that should be enough plates for the task at hand. 
the reason I was looking at the backpack though is you, obviously you can see my inventory is mostly it's like half full more than half full uh, with the stuff I just want to carry around with me um, that's helpful to have so a backpack should like a not these backpacks that only hold like raw materials that we're gathering, but a proper backpack would be really nice to have. Okay, so we need to make, uh, so we were looking at this, which needs this, which needs this, which needs a wire cutter. Um, It'd be helpful if I could just find the iron uh, recipe, but that that can't be easy, right? <laughs> there you go, eternity, eternity, eternity wire cutter, uh, iron wire cutter. Nope. So we'll just do it the hard way, uh, which is to say, it's like this. And then two rods. Something like that, right? Wire cutter. Rods and then a screw and then a screwdriver, a file and a hammer. A screwdriver, a file and a hammer screwdriver ah, and a hammer all right so now there's a wire cutter that will probably relatively soon also break <laughs> okay so now two three four there you go six percent used just in that all right, so now we get that, we get the wire. So now we can make this, but we still need steel rods and red alloy, alloy bolts. Okay, and then, so we use our file again. Yep. And then what else? Red alloy bolts. So how much red alloy do we have left? Four. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, file into rods and then saw into bolts. Oh yeah, bolts, not screws. Okay, one, one step less. less. Uh, okay, so we can make two of those. Now the problem is that one of these, one of these requires two of these. So I need to make two more of these. So I just need to do all the stuff again. Um, but we're gonna do that after the break. So I'm gonna pause right here. I'm gonna go stretch my legs, top off my water. I'll be back in just a few minutes with some more Great Technical Horizons, PRB.